Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. So, guys, you know, the plot thickens. It always is thickening. Can you handle the truth? Can you handle the truth? Cindy. It's super hard to handle the truth. It, handling the truth could be scary, you know. Exactly. Seriously, it seriously can be. The truth can hurt. It can. You know, we have a certain worldview, and it keeps us stable mm -hmm. to a degree, anchored in a particular reality, whatever that reality is. Uh, it could be anything. You know, you could be a, a Confucian. You could be a Taoist. You could be a Christian. You could be, a, a, you know, Islamic. You could be an atheist. Um, you could be a communist. You could be a capitalist. You know, there's all these different labels that we have that define who we are. And yet we keep finding new things that really bring up the question. Well, I mean, they beg to they beg to bring up the question that we really don't know who we are. No, we absolutely do not. And so here we see ghost DNA in West Africans complicates the story of human origins. As if it wasn't complicated enough. And for any of you guys that follow uh, genetics and oh evolution, and a lot of people don't believe in evolution, you know, so, and again, that's usually coming from a religious background, a certain ideology that you've been taught, and you want to maintain that paradigm. Anything that threatens that paradigm has got to go. It's got to be false. There's strength. There's strength in being able to adjust our view of the world as we go. And when presented with some new information, being able to adapt to it and go fluid with it and still be okay. It's, it's rolling with the punches. If you ever got in a newer ring and fought somebody, you know, you find out, wow, I think they hit harder than I, you know, than I do. So then you have to go with it and you have to be a little more strategic, a little more defensive, look for the counterattack, look for opportunities. Well, it's the same way on the bigger scope of things. We have to roll with the punches. So here we see, <laughs> well, evidence that we have yet another missing link, basically, in our human story. And it's just fascinating stuff. And this is coming out of West Africa. About 50,000 years ago, ancient humans in what's now West Africa apparently procreated with another group of ancient humans that scientists didn't know exist. There aren't any bones or any ancient DNA to prove this theory, but researchers say the evidence is in the genes of the modern West Africans. They analyzed genetic material from hundreds of people from Nigeria to Sierra Leone and found signals of what they call ghost DNA from an unknown ancestor. Okay, and now they're not talking about the ones that we've been hit with lately. You know, there's, there's quite a few ancestors that have popped up on the scenes. You know, we, we know about Neanderthals, and we know that Homo sapiens sapiens, which is you and I, unless you're some alien hybrid, or maybe I am. But anyway, uh, Homo sapiens sapiens intermingled, interbred with Neanderthal. And uh, yes, I did it. You know, I had uh, 23ME at the request of my uh, naturopathic doctor at the time who wanted to see if I had any genetic propensities, any sort of disease. So she had me do my DNA testing so that they could, you know, go ahead and know exactly what my gen genome is and God knows do what with it. But, you know, my Neanderthal uh, variants are less than, you know, like 95% of the population. So I don't have a lot of Neanderthal variants, uh, which is something that's found you know, in certain groups such as uh, Europeans and Asians. Then, you know, we also found out that there's also a group called Denisovans uh, as well, which is pretty, pretty wild, pretty fascinating, distinct from Neanderthals. So we had Neanderthals and we had Denisovans. Both of those mingled and had sex and had offspring with Homo sapiens sapiens. And, you know, not so obviously they're not far off from us genetically. Now, supposedly they're gone from the scene now, both of those groups in, in relatively recent history uh, as well. And then we found out that there was Homo habilis, which is, uh, you know, only about three feet tall. These these were humans. Uh, yet different than us, and they were only about three, three and a half feet tall. And yet, you know, they could potentially interbreed with us as well. So 
kind of interesting stuff. And boy, 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 does that bring up all that, you know, Genesis 6 stuff and, you know, everything from there, all the interbreeding and, you know, all the people that are abductees that have seen humans and humanoid beings in these big, basically test tubes held in stasis. Do you, you know, there's been hundreds and thousands of those reports. Are they all hallucinating? Are they all wrong? Is there some sort of huge genetic program going on? And is is the Earth, as I did, I did a video, gosh, about two years ago, uh, basically p- positing, do, do we live in an alien ant farm? Is that really what's going on here? This is an alien ant farm with all these different genetic, well, you know, types that are created. And... I guess maybe analyzed and then all of them except for Homo sapiens sapiens is supposedly gone now. You know, um, I always thought it was very curious that we have bones from Gigantopithecus, mostly just teeth, really, but jaw bones and some others as well. And it's so curious that Gigantopithecus happens to be exactly how Bigfoot is described time and time again. It's in the fossil record. You know, they were like anywhere from 7 feet to 12 feet tall. And huge, 500 to over 1,000 pounds, they're in the fossil record, recognized. There's even reproductions of Gigantopithecus that you could see. And yet, you know, people don't believe in Bigfoot, uh, or science doesn't believe in Bigfoot. But yet, here we have something that's in the fossil record. Yeah, As I want to bring it up just to show you guys, because this is one of my favorite things. You know, Gigantopithecus meets exactly uh, the expectations of what we think Bigfoot to be. And and this isn't going to be a Bigfoot video. You see mandible right there from Gigantopithecus. Uh, And I was looking for a certain photo. I'm sorry, guys. I don't want to waylay you too much on this. But here you can see, you know, this is what he looked like. Uh, you know, if I saw that out in the woods, I'd say, hey, it's a Bigfoot. I would too. I mean, what else would you call it? It lived. You know, scientists will tell you it lived. And scientists will tell you it's just an ape. And, you know, just an ape's mentality. But how do we know that, really? How do we know that? And maybe maybe it was as intelligent or even more than us. We, we really don't know. I think they were more intelligent, are more intelligent. But getting back to this ghost DNA, so here you have another species. We have us, we're Homo sapiens sapiens, at least that's what they tell us, at at least most of us as well, uh, lived alongside other groups that split off from the same genetic family tree at different times. And there's a lot of evidence that we all came from the same family tree there. Not necessarily, uh, well, there's major differences between us and, and the great apes. Uh, although, again, you could look at it in a minimalistic way, you know, when we talk about common DNA, but then we share a lot of common DNA. Our DNA is almost the same to a mouse at the same time. There's just, you know, slight variances. So that perhaps doesn't mean as much as we would think so. But here we talk about Neanderthals. Neanderthal genes are present in humans today and people of European and Asian descent. Homo sapiens also made with another group, the Denisovans. And those genes are found in people from Oceania. And so, oh gosh, this really gets me thinking too about Lemuria and Atlantis. And Cindy and I were talking about that all, all day on and off and also talking to Raven about this. But the findings on ghost DNA published in the journal Science Advances further complicate the picture of how Homo sapiens or modern humans evolved away from other human relatives. It's almost certainly the case the story is incredibly complex and complicated. And we have kind of these initial hints about the complexity. So there's yet another group that we don't know about. So they analyzed 405 West Africans genomes. And they used a a statistical model to flag parts of the DNA. Technique goes along with a person's genome and pulls out chunks of DNA which we think are likely to have come from a population that's not modern human. The unusual DNA found in West Africa is not associated with either Neanderthals or Denisovans. 
So it's not Neanderthals, not Denisovans, not Homo sapiens. So it's a yet to be discovered group. Now, I have my doubts as to whether Neanderthals and Denisovans were exactly what they portray them to be. As we always, you know, tend to look down our nose at others in so many ways and think that they have to be lesser than us, but not necessarily the case. When you look at Neanderthals, for instance, their brain capacity was bigger and they were more muscular. So why did they win out? Hmm, interesting. You know, Denisovans as well. So what's really going on here? Is this, you know, something that's very much in line with Charles Darwin and natural selection and survival of the fittest? Or is that kind of complete BS? Remember, Darwin was a 33rd degree Mason. So I think there's truth to evolution, but I think Darwin was in there to kind of, you know, get us off track. Give us truth, but give us half truth. And that's the way that's the way they control the narrative. So they don't know. We have no clear identity for this archaic group. That's why we call them ghosts, ghost DNA, because they're different. They're distinctive. Maybe they're the Anunnaki. Well, that's why they have to come up with this stuff, because we're starting to wake up and see different things, so they have to make up new stories. Yeah, you know, it's it's really interesting. And so, you know, when you when you when you look at humans, the other thing that's really interesting is our chromosome fusion. And so, you know, our second chromosome has been fused and, you know, this was discovered and it presents a perplexing question who fused us (laughs) now what's curious is denisovans have the same fused dna so we're the fusion happened before uh denisovans and humans diverged so very curious you know when did that fusion happen and you know who did it man you know when you look at the sumerian texts and they actually show pictures of test tubes and the gods mixing things and growing humans and and humans are you know created in test tubes and then implanted into goddesses who then give birth to humans hmm interesting is it not it's really interesting and so the great apes have more chromosomes than we do and our second one our second chromosome's been fused and there's editing that's been done just like crispr technology to us in the distant distant past you know there's really no arguing this um some will uh but again what is our our history and and then we could go and bring in things like the rh factor as well because you know that certainly is a very very interesting thing as well when we're talking about rh negative blood you know so that is something that's not found in any other creature on this planet. Right. It's, it's really curious about the RH negative. So, you know, many people deduce that this shows there's off-planet influence going on. And so, you know, somewhere between 10 and 15% of the population are RH negative. So I am, you know, so it's interesting. Um, and RH stands for rhesus, as in the rhesus monkey. So, hmm, another big question as to our origins. It just fascinating stuff, really fascinating. But again, I think it's pointing to that reality that a lot of people don't will not want to face, and that's that we have been tinkered with. You know, why is there so much diversity amongst the human species as well? Because there's tremendous diversity. It, it's almost like it's been planted there. If you look at some uh, indigenous people, like, you know, uh, the indigenous people of um, Australia or some other tribes, it, it, you know, some of them are very small. You know, they'll, they'll be four feet something. And then, you know, look at some of the Scandinavians, you know, that are giants in, in respect to that. Um, we are very different uh, species. We have such diversity amongst us. And then when we start looking at all the well dead ends, you know, uh, going back to you know Lucy and Australopithecus, Ramapithecus, uh, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, 
it, it goes on and on and on. All these slate variances, always a little different. Yeah, it's like somebody's experimenting and tinkering. That's what it feels like. Yeah, you know, and I'm not so much sure that it's just genetic mutations due to cosmic rays. Maybe some of it, but I think a lot of it is uh, tinkering that's gone on in the past and still going on probably to this day. That's This is some of the stuff that helped wake me up. You know, I had to look at it. Absolutely had to look at it because it's there. It's true. So if you're RH negative, you know, chances are you have a higher IQ. Your eyes are blue, green, or hazel. Reddish hair. And, you know, mine are blue. And when I was five years old, my hair was bright red. Uh, piercing eyes, empathetic qualities, sensitivity to heat, unexplained phobias. Cindy could talk about that. Uh, and highly tuned senses. So if individuals with RH negative blood didn't evolve from the same ancestor as the rest of us, where do they come from? <laughs> I love him. <laughs> well, we're not saying it, but you know. But you know, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if it quacks like a duck, waddles like a duck, smells like a duck. You know, it's that duck. As always, my friends, like, share, subscribe. Thank you for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. God bless and namaste.